told me honestly. I say entire way. I wanted to be alone. The stars is so beautiful. What is the matter? Such meals. There has been a battle. A great battle at Sofinsa. A victory. Oh, mother! Is father safe? Of course, he sails with the news. Sir, this is the hero of the hour, the idol of the regiment. Oh, mother, tell me, tell me, how was it? Mother, mother, mother. You can't with how it takes a cavalry church. Think of that. And the father Russian commanders acted with an orders with a church on his own responsibility. He did himself. Was the first man to sit through their guns. And you? He took Sergius waiting a year and a half but told it to him. Oh, if you have a blood of good brains, but in your brains, you worship him when he comes back. What will I care for my poor little worship after the cremation of whole army of heroes? But no matter. I'm so happy, so proud. It proves that all of our ideas are real after all. Our ideas real? What do you mean? Our ideas over Sergius or two. Our patriotism. Our hero idols. I sometimes used to doubt, but they were anything but dreams. Oh, what faithless little creatures, girl said. When a battle does such a sword, he looked so noble. It was treason to think of desolation or humiliation or failure. And yet, and yet, promise me you'll never tell him. Don't ask me promises until I know what I'm promising. Well, it was just came into my head that he was holding me his arms and looking into my eyes. I doubted him. I wondered whether all his heroic qualities and soldiership might not prove mere imagination when he went into a real battle. I had an uneasy fear that he got hurt. He said all those clever soldiers from the jerk school. The poor figure shone on you. The stars of Boston officer was as clever as possible. But we have beaten them in every battle for all that. Yes, I was only in the frozen cover on the thing that it was all true. The soldiers is as splendid and noble as it looks. The world is really glorious one for the woman who acts romance and the man who saves romance. Oh, what happiness! What unspeakable fulfillment! <laughs> if you please, madam, all the windows are to be closed and the shutters made fast. They say they are shooting in the streets. The thirds are being chased right back to the past. They may run into the town. Our cavalry will be after them, and our people will be ready for this. You may be sure now they are running away. I must say that everything is made such downstairs. I wish our people are not so cruel. What glory is there in killing wretched fugitives? Who oh, well, else? Do you suppose it has to kill you or worse? Leave the shutters so that I can just close it if I hear any noise. Oh no, dear. We must keep them fast. You have to sleep the top. Drop off to sleep and it's open. Make them fast, look up. Yes, madam. Don't anxious about me. The moment I sh hear a shoot, I shall blow out the candles and roll myself up in the pit. With my ears well covered. What the boy is sleep and do, my love. Good night. Good night. Wish me joy. This is the happiest night of my life. If there are no fugitives, go to bed and don't think of them. If you would like the shutters open, just keep them apart. One of them ought to be bolted at the bottom, but the board's gone. Thanks, Luca. But we must do what we are told. Mm -hmm. Good night. Good night.
a narrow shade where the meat is as good as the mine. Dear young lady, you serve to the jail. I wish for your sake I had joined the Bulgarian army instead of the other one. I'm not a native serb. No, you are one of the Austrians. We hate them. Austrians? Not I. I'm a Swiss fighting merely as a professional soldier. I joined sir because they came first on the road from Switzerland. Be generous. You have just beaten us. Have I not been generous? Noble, heroic. But this particular rush will soon pass through and this pursuit will go on by all night by fits and starts and I must take my chance to get it up on a quiet interval. Would you mind if I wait just a minute or two, do you? Oh, not at all. Or do sit down. Thanks. Don't do this. You remember, it was staring that officer in the face all the time. What an escape. Oh, is that all? No you dear, there's nothing in it. It's not loaded. Loaded by all means. I have no ammunition. What is our cartridges in battle? I always carry chocolate in steam. I wish I had some now. Chocolate? Do you stuff your pockets with sweets like a schoolboy even in the field? Yes. Isn't it contagible? I wish I had some now. Allow me. I'm sorry, I have eaten them all except these. You are an angel! Strange! Delicious! Bless you, dear lady! You can always kill an old soldier by the inside of his holster and cartridge boxes. The young ones carry pistols and the old ones drop. Thank you. Don't do things so suddenly. It's been to remove yourself because I frightened you just now. Frightened me? Do you know sir? Though I'm only a woman, I think I went hard as pretty you. Oh yes, you are. You haven't been under fire for three days as I have. I can stand two days without chewing it much. But nobody can stand three days. I am as nervous as mouse. Would you like to see me cry? No. If you would, all you have to do is just call me just as if I'm a little boy and you're my nurse. I'm sorry. I would scold you. Our, our soldiers are not like that. Oh yes, dear. There are two sorts of soldiers. I have served 14 years. Half of your fellow never smelled powder before. Why? How is there that they have just beaten us? Sheer ignorance of art of war. Nothing else. I never saw anything unprofessional. Why is it unprofessional to beat you? Well, come. Is it professional to throw a cavalry? on a battery of machine guns with a dead certainty that if, that if the guns go up, not a horse or a man will ever get within 50 yards of the fire. I couldn't believe when I saw it. Did you see the great cavalry charge? Oh, tell me about it. Describe it to me. You never saw cavalry charge. No, you? how could I? Oh, no, of course. Well, it's a funny sight. First one comes, then two or three in the rest, and all the rest in a lump. Yes, the first one, the bravest of the brave. Hmm, you should see the poor baby pulling at his horse. Why should he pull it at his horse? 
because it's running away. Do you suppose the other fellows to get there before the others and be killed? But I don't think the first man is a coward. I know he is a hero. That's what you would have said if you had seen the first man in charge today. Anyway, tell me, tell me about him. Well, he did it like an upper tenor, a regular handsome fellow with flashing eyes and lovely mustache and shouting his war cry and charging like John Quid at windmills. We dare to laugh. You dare to laugh? Yes, but when the sergeant ran up as she and his wife and tail told us that they had sent us the wrong ammunition and we couldn't fire around for the next 10 minutes, we did laugh at the other side of our mouth. I even I got a revolver cartridge instead of chocolate. And there was John Quid, flashing like a drum major, thinking he had done the cleverest thing ever in the world, whereas he ought to be court martialed for it. He and his regiment simply committed suicide. Only the pistol missed fire. That's all. Indeed. Would you know him again if you saw him? Shall I ever forget him? This is the photograph of a gentleman, the patriot and hero, who I am a victor. I am really very sorry. Was it fair to lead on me? Yes, that's John Quid. Not a doubt of it. Why do you laugh? I didn't laugh. I assure you, at least I didn't mean to. But when I think of charging the windmills, and imagine it, he was doing the finest thing. Give me back the footage, sir. Oh, certainly. I am really very sorry. Most likely he had got the wind of the Cardiff business. I knew it was a safe job. That is to say, he was a pretender and coward, and you dare not say that before. No use, dear. I can make you see from the professional point of view. So much better for you. How? You are my enemy, and you are at my mercy. What would I do if I were a professional soldier? Ah, true, dear young lady. You are always right. I know how good you have been to me for the last hour. I shall never forget the three chocolate creams. It was am soldier, but it was am joy. Thank you. But now, I will do a soldier thing. You cannot stay here after you have just said about my future husband. But I will go out on the balcony and see whether it is safe for you to climb down the street. Stop! Down the water pipe. No, I can't. The very thought, the very thought of it makes me very giddy. I came in fast enough with dead behind of me. Now, thinking of it, it's in cold blood. No, I can't. I gave up. I'm beaten. Give the alarm. Come, don't be disheartened. Oh, you are a very poor soldier. A chocolate cream soldier. Come, cheer up. It takes less courage to climb than to face capture. Remember that. Capture only means date. And date is thin. Oh, sleep, sleep, sleep. I'm disturbed till. When I think in climbing down that water pipe, that means exerting myself. Think ten, ten times over fast. Are you as sleepy as that? I haven't had two hours undisturbed sleep since I joined. I have closed my eyes for 48 hours. But what am I to do with you? Oh, of course, I must do.
do something. You see, sleep or no sleep, hunger or no hunger, tired or no tired. Well, that part must be go job. You know, you can do a thing when you know it must be done. Do you hear the chocolate cream soldier? But if you fall, I shall sleep as if the stones are afraid of me. Goodbye. Stop! They will kill you. Never mind. This sort of thing is all in my day's work. Now do what I tell you. Keep out of the candle so they shan't see the light when I open the shutter and keep out of the window whatever you do. If they see me, they are sure to have a shot at me. They are sure to see you. It's a bright moonlight. I will save you. Oh, how can you be so indifferent? You want me to save you, don't you? I really don't want to be troublesome. I am not indifferent. But how is it to be done? Come in from the window.
Will you please stand up while I'm away? Certainly, certainly. You may demand of me. Dear Paul, what is surprise for us? 
have they brought you to fresh coffee? Yes, Luke has been looking after me. The war is over and the treaty was signed two days ago at Bucharest. And the decree for our army to demobilize while she just started. Paul, have you let the Austrians force you to make peace? My dear, they didn't consult me. What could I do? But of course, we saw to it that the treaty was all over one. It declares peace. Peace? But not friendly relations. Remember that they wanted to put that in, but I insisted on it being straddled. Oh. And how have you been, my dear? My usual sword thoughts, that's so. That all comes from watching on the game video. I've often told you so. Nonsense, Paul. I don't go I don't believe in going too far with these normal customs. All these washings can't be good for him. It's not nature. There was an Englishman at Fifth Polish who used to wait himself all over every morning whenever he got up. Disgusting! Look at my father. He lived to be 98. The healthiest man in Bulgaria. He never had a body. I don't mind a good or strong to keep up my position, but once a day is carrying the whole thing to a ridiculous speed. You are a barber and have steel pot. I hope you behaved yourself before the Russian officers. I did my best, and I took care to let them know that we have a library. Oh, but you didn't tell them that we have an electric bell? What's an electric bell? You touch a button, something tinkles in the kitchen, then you call a cup, sir. Why not shout for it? Similar to the father, shout for the servant. I have learned what you are doing. Well, I will tell you something that I have learned too. Civilized people they have never hanged the washing to dry, but the people can see. So you should have put them on somewhere else. This absurd, Paul. I don't believe really if I'm able to notice such things. Okay, Nicola. Fair suggest. Nicola! Oh, don't shout, but it's really sad things. Oh, bush! Nicola! Yes, sir? Are you there? Don't you hear me the sound of knocking? Go and bring him down this way. Yes, madam. You must talk to him, my dear, until Raina takes him off my hand. He pours my life out of not floating him over my head. Oh, he's starting out to be promoted while he marries Raina. Besides, the country should insist of having one native general. So that he could throw the whole brigade instead of regiments. It's no use, my dear. He hasn't the slightest chance of promotion until we are quite sure that the peace will be a lasting one. Major Sadia Sana! Here already. Sadia! Glad to see you. My dear Sergius. My dear mother. Mother in law, Sergius, mother in law. Sit down and have some coffee. Thank you. You look superb, Sergius. The campaign has improved you. Here everybody's mad about you. We all are with enthusiasm about that magnificent Kimberly Church. Madam, it's worth a great honor and a great of my material reputation. How so? I won the battle the wrong way when our old Russian generals were losing it the right way. In short, we upset their plans and wounded their self esteem. To go to colonels, got their regiments driving back on the current principles of scientific warfare. Two major generals got killed strictly according to the military etiquette. Those two colonels are now major generals, and I am still a simple major. You shall not remain so suggest that women are on your side, and they will see that justice is done you. It's too late, madam. I only waited for the fees, saying in my resignation. Your resignation? Oh, you must withdraw it. I never withdraw. Now who could have supposed that you were going to do such a thing? Everybody that knew me. Enough of myself and my affairs. How is Raina? Where is Raina? Raina is here! Pretty, isn't it? She always appears at the right moment. Yeah, she listens for it. It's the number when it will happen. Oh, dear father, welcome home! My little pet girl, see here. And so you are no longer a soldier, mm -hmm. Sergius? No, madam. I'm no longer a soldier. So doing my demand is the coward's art of attacking mercilessly when you are strong and keeping out of arms way when you are weak. They wouldn't let us make a fair and of fight of it. However, I suppose soldiering has to be a trade like any other trade. Precisely, that I have no ambition to succeed as a tradesman. And that is why I have taken the suggestion of the batman to settle the extent of our prisoners with us at Pirot. But that that's a fellow. Sergius, I've often thought of the direction since. You are very stuff about those horses. Of course you are very stressed. Is Swiss fellow? And what is it in the Serbian army? A volunteer, of course. You're not picking up this profession. We shouldn't have been able to start fighting if this foreigner had been shown us how to do it. We know nothing about it, and neither did the Serbs. And he got it. There would have been no war with them. Are there many Swiss officers in the Serbian army? No, all Russians. Just as our officers were all Russians. This was the only Swiss I came across. He humbugged us into giving him 50 hour bodied men with 200 honor charges. They weren't even in We were two children in the hands of a consumer soldier. 
bigger to help some little children. What was he like? Oh, Raina, what a silly question. He was like a commercial traveler in uniform. Bush went to his books. Sergeant, Pierre Catherine in that query story his friend told us how he escaped Srivnitsa. You remember? He has been hit by two women. Oh, oh yes, quite a romance. Being a Thor soldier, he had to run away like any other soldier. But he had a good test to take refuge in the chamber of a young Bulgarian lady. And that young Bulgarian lady was very much enchanted by his travelers' manners. And that lady entertained him for an hour or more. And then she called her mother. The old lady was equally fascinated. The beauty was sent on his way in the morning with the call of the master of the house who was away at the war. <laughs> Your life in the camp has made a course, Sergius. I didn't think you would have repeated such a story before me. She is right, Sergius. If such a man exists, we should spread the knowledge of them. <laughs> oh, boy. What does it matter? No, Petra. I am as well. I have behaved that woman. Forgive me, Raina. And you have to learn. The glimpses I have had for the last few months made me very cynical. And I should have brought the senses of here, at least in front of you, Raina. Ah, uh, stuff and nonsense, Sergius. That's quite enough first about nothing. The soldier's daughter should be able to stand up with a pitching to a little strong conversation. Come, Sergius, it's our time to get to business. Come along. Oh, Paul, can't you spare Sergius for the moment? Raina is hardly seen him yet. Perhaps I can still help you with the city management. Why do you matter? It's possible. Just stay here, Sergius. Don't hurry. I have a word to say, Paul. Now, dear, come and sit on your face. Oh, well, very well. My forgiven. My hero, my king. My queen. All my deeds have been yours, you inspired me. I have gone through the world like a knight in a tournament with a lady looking on at him. And you have never been absent from my heart for a moment. Sergius, I think we do have found the higher love. For I think of you, I feel that I could never do a base deed or take an ignoble thought. My lady, my saint. My lord and my... Let me be the worshipper here. You little know how I'm be even the best man is of a girl's pure fashion. I trust you. I love you. You will never disappoint me, Sergius. Da, 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 da. I can't pretend to talk indifferently before her. My heart is too full. I'll get my head that can go out until lunchtime. Wouldn't you like that? Be quick, Marina. If you were out at five minutes, it seems like five hours. Luca, do you know what the hard love is? No, sir. Very faraway thing to keep up for any length of time, Luca. One feels the need of some relief after it. Sleep needs a says if he saw me now. What is Sergius the apostle of our love says if he saw me now? What are the other dozens of Sergius says if they caught us here? Do you consider my figure handsome, Luca? Oh, sir, let me go, sir. I shall be disgraced. Will you let go? No. Yeah. Stand back for you can be seen. Have you no common sense? That's reasonable. I may be seen from the window. Miss Ryan is sure to be spying about after you. Take care, Loka. I may be worthless enough to betray the higher love, but do not even insult it. Not for the worst, I'm sure. May I go with my work, please, now? You are a little provoking witch, Loka. If you were in love with me, don't you spy out of windows on me? Well, I have a great deal to look up. Witch, as well as pretty. No, I don't want your kisses. Little folk are all alike. You are making love with me behind Miss Rhino's back. And she is doing the same behind yours. Luca, if our conversation is to continue, please remember one thing that a gentleman does not discuss the conduct of the lady with the youngest to with her mate. It's so hard to know what a gentleman consider right. Devil! Devil! Luca. Yes? Who is my rival? You shall never get that out of me from love or money. Why? Never mind why. Besides, you tell me. 
I told you I should lose my place. Who is he? I don't know him. I never saw him. Only heard his voice behind the behind the door. Damnation! How dare you? I mean no, no harm. The mistresses know all about that. And I tell you one thing: if the gentleman come here again, Miss Raina will marry him. Now, listen to me. Not so tight. You're hurting me. That doesn't matter. You have stained my honor by making me up with stropping, and you have betrayed your mistress. Please. It shows that you are an abominable little clod of a common to play with the soul of a servant. You know how to hurt with your tongue as well as your hand? But I don't care. I have got found whatever clay I made of, and you are made of the same. As for her, she is a liar. Look, a gentleman has no right to hurt a woman under any circumstances. I beg your pardon. Sort of apology may satisfy a lady, but what use? Is, is it a servant? Oh, you wish to get paid for the hurt? No, I want my heart made. How? Never! I'm ready! What's the matter? Have you been flirting with Loka? No! No! How can you think such a thing? Oh, forgive me, dear. It was only a jest. I am so happy today. I'm sorry to disturb you, children, but Paul is disturbed over the streets. He doesn't know how to send them to the table with him. Even he objects every session of mine. You must go and help yourself. He's in the library. But we're just going out for a walk. I'll be quick, Raina. I'll be there in five minutes. If you are a moment longer than five minutes, I shall go in and fetch you. Regiments are no regiments. Very well. He was in their meeting. That Swiss fell the whole story. The very first thing I knew father asked for the old for that was we sent him. A nice mess you have you have got us into. Oh, the little beast. Little beast? What little beast? To go and tell. Oh, if I had him here, I would come over the chocolate cream till he could have never speak again. Don't talk such a brain. Huh? Tell me the truth. How long he's in the room before you come to me? Oh, I forget. You cannot forget. Did he really climb up that the soldier were gone? Or was it there when the officer searched out your room? No. Yes. I think he might have been there then. You think? Oh, Raina, Raina. We don't think maybe very straight for what? If Sir Jess finds you, it will all be to nobody. Oh, I know Sir Jess is your pet. I sometimes wish you could, you could marry him instead of me. You would just suit him. You would pet him, spoil him, and mother him to perfection. Well, upon my word, I don't care whether he finds about the chocolate cream soldier or not. I hope he will be made. And what would be able to say your father pray? Oh, poor father, as if you could help himself. Oh, Brian, I for only ten years younger. There's the gentleman just call you, madam. A Serbian officer. Yes, sir. And how dare he? Oh, I forget. Where is this now? I shall I suppose you shall have them calling every day to pay their compliments. Well, if he's an officer, why didn't why don't you tell your master? He is busy in the library with her. Why do you come to me? But he asked for him. I don't think he knows him. He said the mistress of the house. And he saved the little little ticket for you. Captain Gunsweet, German. Swiss madam, I think. Swiss? What is it like? A big carpet bag, madam. Oh heaven! He come to say, return the coach. Send him away and say we are not at home. Yes. And ask him to leave his address. I will write to him. Wait. Yes, madam. The ma master and male shall are in the library, I think. I think so, madam. Well, bring the gentleman here at once. And be polite to him. Don't delay. Here. Leave it here. And go straight back to him. Look up. Yes, madam. Is the letter to shut? I think so, madam. If not, shut is as you pass through. Yes, madam. Stop. You will have to go in back that way. Tell, tell Nicola to bring his bag here after him. Don't forget. Thank <laughs> you.
would feel such a fool, such a moment to select. Captain Bransby. My dear Captain Bransby, glad to see you, but you must leave this place at once. My husband has just returned with my son, but he knows nothing. If he discovers our secret, he will never forgive me, and the daughter and the wife of my daughters will hardly be safe. Will you like the chivalry gentleman, you soldier you are? You must leave this house at once before it finds you. At once, gracious lady. I only came to thank you and to return the good you lent me. If you allow me to take to take it out of my bag and leave it with your servant as a password, I need detain you no further. No, no, no. You mustn't think going that way. This is the shortest way. Many thanks. Goodbye. But my bag? It will be sent on. You will leave your address. True. Allow me. My dear Captain Brasley. Oh, Captain. So these two big people of mine thought I was out here instead of in the library. I was wondering why you didn't come in. Sharon is with me. You remember? Okay. Welcome, our friend, the enemy. No longer the enemy, happily. I hope you are called as a friend and not about those horses or pigeons. Why does it pass? I was just asking Captain Brasley to must to stay here to lunch, but he declares he must go at once. Impossible, Blanchfleet. We need it here badly. We have to send three cavalry regiments to the Philippines. We must know how to do it. Philippopolis, the forest is the travel, I suppose. Yes, that's it. This is the whole thing at once. I think I can show you how to manage that. Invaluable men, come along. Oh, the chapter keeps on. Here, Ryan, don't you see that we have a new guest here? Captain Blanche, one of our servant friends. How silly of me. I made a beautiful ornament this morning for the ice pudding and that stupid Nicola has just put down a pail of pile of flesh and spoiled it. I hope you didn't think that you are the chocolate king soldier, Captain Bramsey. I assure you, I did. Your explanation was a relief. And since when, Greg, have you taken to cooking? Oh, why is there a way? It is a new lady's fancy. And has Nicola taken to drinking? Used to be careful enough. Ask his shoes, Captain Blanchley, out here, and he knew quite well that I was in the library. And then he breaks down Raina's chocolate cream soldier. He must. Are you mad, Nicola? Sir? Why have I bought that back for? My lady's order, man. The local told me that. My order? Why I should order you to bring Captain Blanchley's luggage out here? What do you think, Nicola? I beg your pardon, Captain Blanchley. I'm sorry, madam. I hope you will overlook it. You better go and slam that back too on me side of it. Because you got a finger dangy. Oh, never mind. Don't be angry, Paul. This comrade, he has gone out of hand. The infernal beggar. The sad next Saturday, I will clear out the whole establishment. Now, 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 you must not say anything. Wow, 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 wow. Not wow. to be your first. She meant to harm. Be good to please, dear. Stay at home and let's make another ice pudding. Oh well, never mind. Come, Blasley. Let's have no more nonsense about going away. You know quite well that you're not going back to Switzerland yet. And until you do go back, you will stay with us. Oh, do, Captain Blasley. And now, Catherine, it's up to you. He's afraid. Daisy, you will stay. Of course. I shall show you that if Captain Blasley really wishes mm. to stay here, he knows my wishes. I am at Madam's order. That sounds it. Of course. You see, you must stay. Well, if I must, I must. I can't help in any way, Blasley. Quite sure. Thank you. Son of and I will manage it. Yes, we will manage it. He finds what to do. Drops out the order of sign M. Division of flavor. Another one? Thank you. This hand is more accustomed to sword than to the pain. That's very good of you, Blasley. Are you quite sure I can do nothing? 
You're gonna stop interrupting, Paul. Eh? <laughs> Quite right, my love. Quite right. Ah, you haven't been complaining, Catherine. You don't know how pleasant it is for us to sit here after a good lunch with nothing to do but enjoy ourselves. There's only one thing I want to make me truly comfortable. What is that? My old coat. I'm not at home in this one. I feel as if I were on parrot. My dear Paul, how absurd you are about that old coat. It must be hanging up your blue closet. My dear Catherine, I told you I'd look there. Am I to believe my own eyes or not? What are you shaving off the pill for? My dear, if you think the obstinacy of your sex can make a coat out of two old dressings of Raina's, you're waterproof on my Macintosh. You're mistaken. That's exactly the blue closet contains at present. Nicola, go to the blue closet and bring your master for here, the bride, once you were in the house. Yes, madam. Catherine. Yes, Paul. I bet you any piece of jewelry you'd like to order from Sophia's against a week's housekeeping money, that the code is in there. Done, Paul. Huh? Come, here's an opportunity for some sport. Who'll bet on it? Lastly, I'll give you six to one. It would be robbing your major, and I'm sure to be right. Bravo, Switzerland. Major, I bet my best charger against an arrow mail for riding up that Nicola find a boat in the blue coast. Your best charger? Don't be foolish, Paul. An Arabian mail costs you 50,000 labels. Really, brother? If you're going to take the jewelry, I don't see how you should grasp me my arrow. Where is it, Nicola? Hanging in the blue closet. Well, I'm... Paul! I could have sworn it wasn't there. It is beginning to tell on me. Yeah, I'm getting to change. Excuse me, Blushley. I remember, I didn't take that bread of yours, Sergius. You better give Raina that Arab seed yourself, since you have rose her expectations. Eh, Raina? She's dreaming, as usual. Assuredly, she shall not be the loser. So much the better for her. I shall come up so cheaply, I expect. Ah, uh, I feel at home at last. That's the last order. What? Finished? Finished. Haven't you anything for me to sign? Not necessary. A signature will do. Ah, uh, well, I think we've done a thundering good day's work. Can I do anything more? Just see that the fellows that ever take this. I will say so. Just see that he talks to the poor Pali Major, will you? Quite right, Brushley. Quite right. By the way, Catherine, you may as well come too. They'll be far more frightened of you than of me. I dare say I had better. You should only splatter it. What an argument. They make cannons out of cherry trees and the officers send their wives to keep discipline. You look ever so much nicer than when we last met. What have you done to yourself? Washed, brushed, we may sleep and breakfast. That's all. Did you get back safely that morning? Quite, thanks. Were they angry with you for running away such a chance? No, they are glad because they would all just run away themselves. It must have made a lovely story all the time with me and my two. Capital story, but I only told it to one of them, a particular friend. On whose discretion you could absolutely rely. Absolutely. Hmm, he told it to all to such as and my father that day you exchanged a pigeons. No, you don't mean that, do you? I do indeed, but they don't know. It is in this house you took refuse. If such as knew, he would challenge you and kill you in a duel. Oh, bless me, then don't tell him. Please be serious, Captain Blushley. Can you not realize what is to me to deceive you? I want to be quite perfect with searches. No meanness, no smallness, no deceit. My love for him, the really beautiful and noble part of my life. I hope you can understand that. You mean that you wouldn't like him to find out the story about the ice pudding was, uh, you know? Ah, don't talk it then in three way. I like it. I know it. But I did it to save your life. He would have killed you. This is the second time I ever uttered a falsehood. Do you remember the first time? I? No. Was I present? Yes. And the officer who was searching for you, I told that you were not present. True. I should have remembered it. Ah, it is natural that you would forget it first. It cost you nothing. It cost me a lie. A lie. My dear young lady, don't let this worry you. Remember, I'm a soldier. 
Now, what are the two things that happen to us so the so often that it comes to think nothing of them? One is hearing people tell lies, and the other is getting his life saved in all sorts of ways by all sorts of people. And so he becomes a creature of incapable of gratitude? Do you like gratitude? I don't. If pity is akin to love, gratitude is akin to the other thing. Gratitude? If you are incapable of gratitude, you are incapable of any noble sentiment. Even animals are grateful. Oh, now I see what you think of me. You are not surprised to hear me lie, do you? It was something I did every day, every hour. This is how men think of women. There's reason in everything, my dear young lady. You have said you only told two lies in your whole life. Isn't that rather a short allowance? Do you know, sir, that you are insulting me? I can't help it. When you strike in that noble attitude and you speak in the thrilling voice, I admire you. But I find it impossible to believe every single word you say. Captain Brushley! Yes. Do you mean what you said just now? Do you know what you said just now? I do. I? I? How did you find me out? Instinct, dear young lady. Instinct and experience of the world. Do you know that you are the first man I have ever met who didn't take me seriously? You mean that, don't you? I am the first man who ever taken you quite seriously. I suppose I do mean that. Oh, how strange it is to be talked in that such a way. You know, I have always gone on like that. You mean the... I mean the noble attitude and the thrilling voice. I did it when I was a tiny child to my nurse. She believed in it. I do it before my parents. They believe in it. I do it for sizes. He believes in it. Yes, he is a little in that line himself, isn't he? Oh, do you think so? No, I'm better than I do. Oh, I wonder, I wonder if we, if I thought that, ah, what does it matter? Now you have found me out, I think you would despise me. No, my dear young lady. No, 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 a thousand times. It's part of your youth, part of your charm. I'm like all the rest of them. Sajius, your parents, the nurse, I'm your infatuated admirer. Really? Hands of house, really and true. How did you think of me to giving you my portrait? Your portrait? You never gave me your portrait. You mean to say that you never bought it? No. When did you send it to me? I didn't send it to you. Send it to you. It was in that pocket of that coat. Oh, it must be there still. There is still? For my father to find out the first time he put his hand in his pocket? Oh, how could he be so stupid? It doesn't matter. I suppose it's only a photograph. How can he tell who it was intended for? Oh, it is so clever, isn't it? Oh, what shall I do? Oh. You wrote something on it. That was rash. To have done such a thing for you who doesn't care anymore. Are you sure nobody has touched it? Well, I can be quite sure. I can take it with me all the time. One can take much luggage on active service. How did you do it? In? Well, I have got through to got through to period. I have to put it in safekeeping somehow. So I pawned it. Pawned it? I know it doesn't sound nice, but it was master service plan. You have a low shopkeeping mind. You think of things that have never come into your gentleman's head. Oh, I wish I had never met you. That's the Swiss national character, dear lady. Who are you? The messenger is waiting. Will you excuse me? Oh, oh, bad news. Bad news? My father's dead. Oh, how very sad. Yes, I shall have to start for home in an hour. He has left a lot of big orders to be looked after. Here's a walking letter from my family solicitor. Great heavens. 70, 200, 900, 9,000, 9,600. What on earth am I to do with them all? 9,000 hotels? Hotels? Nonsense. If you only knew. Oh, it's too ridiculous. Excuse me, I must leave my fellow orders already starting. He has not much heard this, Swiss. He has not a word of grief for his poor father. Grief? A man who has been doing nothing but killing people for years? What does he care? What does any soldier care? Major Saranov has been fighting too, and he has plenty of hurt left. Oh, I thought you wouldn't get much feeling out for your soldier. I have been trying all the afternoon to get a medal with you, huh? Why? What passion is out of worrying your slave, child? My own passion. Indeed. You tell me she is catching. She will talk to you. Is that any reason why you should take it on yourself to talk to me? Oh, don't be so contrary with me. I have some good news for you. See, the twenty love of this. So just getting that out of your sugar. A fool and his money are soon parted. There is twenty love us more. 
the Swiss give me that for the making of the mistrains and run a slice about him. He's not a fool. He's an a twinkle the twinkle will go to our settings. And you shall have the ten if you only talk to me. As you remember me, I'm a human being. I get tired of being a servant occasionally. Yes. Sell your manhood for thirty levels and buy me for ten. Keep your money. You were born to be a servant. I was not. When you set your own shop, you will be everybody's servant instead of somebody's servant. Ah, uh, what do you see? We shall have our own evening to ourselves. And I shall be master in my own house, I promise you. You shall never be master in mine. You have a great ambition in you, Loka. But remember, if in the last come to you, it was I that made you one of you. You? Yes, me, who taught you to trim your nails and keep your hand clean and be daily devout to yourself like a fine Russian lady. Me? Do you wear that me? I have often thought that if run out of the way and you just a little less of fool and sort you just a little more of what? You might become to my one of my greatest customer. Instead, only being my wife and costing me money. I believe you would rather be my servant than my husband. You would make more out of me. Oh, I know that soul of yours. Never you mind my soul, but just listen to my advice. If you want to be a lady, your present behavior won't do at all. The way to get as a lady is the same the way to get as a servant. You got to know your place. That's the secret of me. And you may give it on me to know my place. If you get one day, you think about it, my girl. I'll stand by you. One servant should always stand by another. Oh, I must behave in my own way. You take all the courage out of me, you your cold blooded mixture. Go and put those logs on the fire. That's the sort of thing you understand. I am not in the way of your work, I hope. Oh, no, sir. I was only talking to this foolish girl. I would not have it of running up here to the library to read those books. There's a sir, there's a also of her education, sir. It gives her habit of above her station. Make the table TD look up. Okay, major. Let me see, is there mark there? Does it hurt? Yes. Shall I cure it? No, you cannot cure it now. Quite sure. Don't trifle with me, please. An officer should not trifle with a servant. That was not trifle, Loka. Are you sorry? I'm never sorry. I wish I could believe a man could be as woman as that. I wonder, are you really a brave man? Yes, I am a brave man. My heart jumped like a woman as for sure. But in charge, I found that I was brave. Yes, that at least is real about me. Did you find the charge that the men whose father are poor like mine were any less brave than men who are rich like him? Not a bit. They are all slashed and cursed and here like a hero. Shah, the car is to the rage and kill his chief. Oh, give me the man. Will defy to the death any power on earth or in heaven. Itself is against own will and consent. He alone is the brave. How is it is to talk? Men never seem to me to grow up. They all have these schoolboys' ideas. You don't know what true courage is. Indeed, I'm willing to be instructed. If I were Empress of Russia, above everyone in the world, then, ah, uh, then, though according to you, I could show no courage at all. You should see. You should see. What would you do, most noble Empress? I will marry the man I loved, which no other queen in Europe has the courage to do. If I loved you, though you would be as far beneath me as I am beneath you. I dare to be the equal of my inferior. Would you dare as much if you loved me? No. If you fail the beginning of love for me, you would not dare. You would marry a rich man's daughter, because you would be afraid of what other people would say. You lie! It is not so by all the stars. If I loved you, I encourage himself. I would set you on the throne by my side. But you know, I love another woman, a woman as high above as you, and you are jealous of her. I have no reason to be. She will never marry you now. The man I told you of has come back. She will marry the Swiss. The Swiss? A man or ten of you. And you can come to me, and I will refuse you. You are not good enough for me. I will kill the Swiss, and after what I will do as I please with you. The Swiss will kill you. Perhaps he has beaten you in love. He may beat you in war. Do you think I believe that she? She? Whose old thoughts are higher than your best one is capable and trifling with another man behind my back? Do you think she would believe the Swiss if he told her now that I'm in your arms? Damnation! Oh, damnation!
every nation, mockery, mockery, everyone, everything I think is mocked by everything I do. Coward like a fool, shall I kill myself like a man, or live pretend to laugh at myself? Loka, remember, you belong to me. What does that mean, an insult? It means that you love me and that I have it in my arms. And we'll parents, here I love you again. Whether that is an insult, I neither no care, take it as you please. But I will not be a coward and tiffler. If I choose to love you, I have dare marry you in spite of Bulgaria. If this hands ever touch you again, they shall touch my friend's bird. We shall see whether you dare keep your words. And take care, I will not make long. Yes, we shall see, and you shall with my pleasure. That's a remarkable looking young woman. Captain Blanchley, what? you have deceived me. You are my rival. I broke no rivals. At six o'clock I shall be in the drilling ground on Kilshore Road, alone, on horseback, with my saber. Do you understand? Oh, thank you. That's a cavalryman's proposal. I am in the artillery and I have the choice of weapons. If I do, I shall take a machine and have this. There shall be no mistake about the cartridge this time. Take care, sir. It is not our custom in Bulgaria to allow invitation that can be trifled with. Pooh, don't talk to me about Bulgaria. You don't know what fighting is, but have it in your own way. Bring us ever along. I will meet you. Well said, sir. Shall I my shall I lend my best horses to you? Oh, damn your horse. Thank you all the same, my dear fellow. I shall fight you on foot. Horseback's too dangerous. I don't want to kill you if I can help it. I have heard what Captain Blanche is said, sir. Yes. You are going to fight. Why? What about? I don't know. He hasn't told me. Better not interfere, dear young lady. No harm will be done. You will not be able to touch me and I will not hurt you. In the morning, I shall be off home and you will, you will never see me or hear me off again. He will be with you and he will then leave happily ever after. I never said I wanted to see you again. Ha! That's a confession. What do you mean? You love that man. Sergius! You allow him make love to you behind my back. Just as you treat me as your different husband, Pianist, Blanchley, you knew our relationship and you deceive me. It is for that that I call you to account, not for having this thing that I never enjoy. Stuff rubbish. I have received no favors. Why the young lady doesn't even know whether I'm married or not? Oh, are you? You see the young lady concerned. Captain Blanchley, Daniel is useless. You have enjoyed the privilege of being deceived by own room late at night. Yes, you block it. She received me with a pistol at her head and your cavalry are at my heels. I would have blown her brains out if she would utter the cry. Blanchley, Raina, is that true? Oh, how dare you? How dare you? Apologize, man. Apologize. I never apologize. This is the doing of that your friend, Captain Blanchley. It is he who is spreading this horrible story about me. No, he is dead. Not alive. Not alive? Oh, how horrible. And how ridiculous. Oh, what, what? The dream of Patriots? Uh, Fort Blanchley, a whole motion of light love. Light love? You say that before me? Come, son of, that matter is explained. A uh, whole shame, I say. Would you have come back if nothing has passed between except the model of the pistol? Raina is mistaken your friend. He is not my informant. Who then? Ah, uh, Loka, my me, my servant. You are with her after? After? Oh, what sort of god am I worshipping? You know that I looked out of the window when I went upstairs to have another sight of my hero. And I saw something that I didn't understand then. Now I understand that you are making love to her. You saw that? Only too well. Raina, our romance is shuddered. Life is the first. You see? He has found his alarm now. Blanchley, I have allowed you call me a blockhead. You may call me a coward as well. I refuse to fight to you. Do you know why? No, but it doesn't matter. I'm a professional soldier. I fight when I have to and I'm very glad to get out of it when I have it. You are an amateur. You think fighting is an amusement? You shall all the reason is same. My professional. The reason is that it takes two men, real men, man of a heart, blood and honor to make a genuine comment. I could no more fight with you than I could make love to an ugly woman. You have no magnetism. You are not a man, you are a machine. Quite true, quite true. 
I was always that sort of chair. I'm very sorry. Pusha! But now that you have found that life isn't a farce, but quite a sensible and serious thing, what further obstacle is there to your happiness? You are very solicitous about my happiness and his love. Do you forget his new love, Loka? It is not you he must fight now, but his rival, Nicola. Rival? Don't you know that they are engaged? Nicola? I'm fresh of his opening? Nicola? A shocking sacrifice, isn't you? Such beauty, such intellect, such modesty, who is it on this media sacrifice? Really suggest. If they are not disturbed by it, so, and a such a cheap thing, it would be out of you for your shiver. I told you, sir, you are getting the most of this. Don't you realize, Captain Zanji, <coughs> what he has done? He sent this girl as a spy on us, and her duty is to make love to her. False! Monstrous! Monstrous? Do you deny that? She told you, Captain Zanji, we need my room. No, but do you deny that? When she told you, you make love to her. No, but I tell you. It is unnecessary to tell us anything more. It is quite enough for us. See, sir, you get the most of this. Tiger cat! You hearing this man calling me next, Captain Blushley? What else can he do, dear lady? He must defend himself somehow. Come, go ahead. What good does he do? English to Nicola. Ha ha ha. Oh, well, Blushley. You are right. He was the imposture of one coolly. I dare say you think us a couple of grown up babies, don't you? He does, he does. Sweet civilization, not standing. Will you hear about this, I mean? Not at all. I assure you. I am very glad that you two have quitted. There, there. Let's talk in a friendly way. Where is the other young lady? Listening, I did probably. I will prove that. That that list is coming. Jaja Bronsley, you are the cool impression man. Just the English paper. I must not judge her. I once listened myself outside a tent when there was a meeting to greet. It's all about the degree of provocation. My life was at stake. My love was at stake. I'm not ashamed. Your love? Your curiosity, you mean? My love is stronger than anything you can feel. Even though you're a chocolate cream soldier. What does it mean? It means... Oh, I remember. I was putting a plenty of time girl. Excuse me, Shasta, gentlemen. Raina. Somebody has been wearing that coat of mine. I swear it. Someone with a differently shaped back. Your mother is mending it. It's all burst open at the sleeves. I shall catch cold. I wish you'd make haste. Is there anything the matter? No. Oh, no. Nothing, nothing. That's all right. Anything the matter, Luca? No, sir. That's all right. <laughs> ah. Go and ask your mistress from my coat, like a good girl, will you? Here it is, Papa. Give it to me, Nicola. Do you put some more wood on the fire? Ah, going to be very good to poor old Papa just for one day, after he's returned from his work, eh? Ah, uh, how can you say that to father? Well, well, only a joke to everyone. Come, give me a kiss. Now give me the coat. No, I'm going to put, a, put it on your feet. Turn your back. There, dear. Are you comfortable? Quite a little love. Thanks. By the way, I found something funny. What is the meaning of this? Well, uh, hello? What is that? I could have sworn. Your mother's made taken it. Taken what? Your photograph with the inscription, Raina to her chocolate cream soldier, a souvenir. Now you know there's something more in this than meets the eye. I'm going to find out. Nicola! Sir. Did you spoil the pastry of Miss Raina's this morning? You heard that Miss Raina said that I did, sir. I know that, you idiot. Was it true? I'm sure Miss Raina is incapable of saying anything. That is not true, sir. Are you? Then I'm not. Come, do you think I don't see it all? Soldiers, you are the chocolate king soldier, aren't you? I? 
A chocolate king soldier? Certainly not. Not? You mean to tell me that Ryan does say speak things like that to other men? The world is not such an innocent place we used to think, Petkov. It's all right, Major. I am the chocolate king soldier. The young lady simply saved my life by giving me chocolates when I was starving. Shall I ever forget that day? You made my friend lay his toes and feel it. I was the fugitive. You? Sergius, you remember how those two women went on this morning when we mentioned it? You're a nice young woman, aren't you? Major Sarnoff had changed his mind. And when I wrote on that photograph, I didn't know that Captain Flash was married. I'm not married. You said you were. I did not. I positively did not. I was never married in my life. Raina, will you kindly inform me if I'm not asking too much? Which of these gentlemen you are engaged to? To neither of them. This young lady is the object of major sign of affection at present. Luca? Why? Are you mad, Sergius? This girl's engaged to Nicola. I beg your pardon, sir. There is a mistake. Luca is not engaged to me. Not engaged to you? Why? You had 25 dollars from me at the day of your betrothal. And she had that guilt bracelet from Miss Rainer's. We gave it out, so, sir. But it was only to give local protection. She had a soul and a frustration. Sir, I have been no more than her confidential servant. I intend, as you know, to set up a shop later on in Sofia and to look for her costume and recommendation should she marry into the nobility. Well, um, this is the finest egoism or prohibition, which is in Pelchley. Never mind whether it's heroism or business. Nicola is the ablest man I have ever met in Bulgaria. I will make him the manager of a hotel if he could speak French and German. I have been insulted everyone here. You set them the example. You owe me an apology. It's no use. He never apologized. Not to you. He's equal and his enemy. To me, his poor servant, he will never refuse to apologize. You're right. Forgive me. I forgive you too. Oh, this touch makes me your offense, wife. Ah, I forgive you. You can withdraw if you like. Withdraw? Never. You belong to me. What does this mean? Oh, my dear, it appears that Sajjah is going to marry Luca instead of Raina. Don't blame me. I have nothing to do with it. Marry Luca? Sajjah, you are bound by your word to us? Nothing binds me. Your hand. My congratulations. Yes, yes, young lady. Based wishes of good people. Luca, you have been telling stories. I have a right to call her Raina. She calls me Luca. I told Major Saranov that she will never marry me, marry him, if the Swiss gentleman came back. I thought you were fonder of him than of Sergius. You know best whether I was right. What nonsense! I assure you, my dear lady, my dear Major, the young lady simply saved my life. Nothing else. She never cared to his cross for me. Why, bless my heart and soul. Look at the young lady and look at me. She, rich, young, beautiful, with her imagination full of fairy princes and noble natures and cavalichas and goodness knows what. And I, a commonplace Swiss soldier who knows hardly what a decent life is after 15 years of battles and barracks. A beggar one, a man who has spoiled the chances of his life incredibly rookie through an incredibly romantic disposition. A man... Ah, uh, excuse me, Manchley. What did you say had a spoil your chance in life? An incredibly romantic disposition. When I was a boy, I ran away from the room twice. I climbed in the balcony of this house when any other man would have dived into the nearest cellar. I came, sneaking back to have another look at the young lady. 
But any other man of my age would have seen the coat back. My coat? Yes, that's the coat I mean. I would have sent it back and gone to home quickly. You suppose that I am the sort of guys that young girls fall in love with? I am 34 and I think the young lady is not much over 70. All that adventures which is life or dead to me was only a schoolgirl's game to hunt. Chocolate creeps and hide and seek. Here's the proof. Now tell me, would a woman who have took the affair seriously send me this and written on it, Raina to her chocolate cream soldier, Sovina? Just what I was looking for. How the deuce did it get there? I have put everything all right, I hope. Yes, yes, young lady. I am quite happy with your account of yourself. You are a romantic idiot. Next time, I hope you can make the difference between a school girl of 17 and a young woman of 23. 23? Blanche, my one last belief is gone. Your status it is short like everything. You have less sense than even I. 23! 23! In that case, Major Petkov, I officially propose to become a suitor for your daughter's hand. Obviously, in place of Major Son of Retired. You dear! When you say these things to me, nothing I shall take them seriously. I doubt so. Whether you quite realize my daughter's position or that, Major Sir, dear Sir, of whose place you propose to take, the Petkov and Sir of as known as most richest family in our country. Our position is almost historical. You can go back for 20 years. Oh, never mind that, Catherine. We should be most happy. Blanchley, if it were only a question of your position, but hang it then. Raina is accustomed to a very comfortable establishment. So I just gives 20 horses. But who wants 20 horses? We are not going to keep the circus. My daughter, sir, is accustomed to fast red statue. Hush, madam. You are making me ridiculous. Well, if it comes to an establishment, there it goes. How many horses did you say? Twenty noble Caesar. I have two hundred horses. How many carriages? Three. I have seventy. Twenty-four of them hold twelve inside. Besides two on the box, without counting the driver and conductor. How many tablecloths have you? How did you sign up? Do you have four thousand? No. I have. I had 9,600 pairs of sheets and blankets with 2,400 Idaton goods. <coughs> I have 300 servants. I have six palatial establishments, besides two liver, livery stables. I have four medals for distinguished services. I have the rank of an officer and standing of a gentleman. I have 300 servants. I have a private house, a tea garden. I have six palatial establishments, besides two livery stables. I have the rank of an officer and the standing of a gentleman. I have three native languages. Show me any man in Bulgaria that can offer as much. Uh, is there a pair of Switzerland? I have the highest rank of Switzerland. I am a free citizen. Then Captain Blanchley, since you are my daughter choice, I not. shall not stand by your happiness. And this is Mr. Pitko feeling also. I shall only be too glad. 200 horses. Who? What said the lady? The lady says that he can keep his table cut and his omnibuses. I am not here to be sold to the highest bidder. I will take that answer. You accepted me as a beggar, a fugitive, a man who was starving. You gave me your hand to kiss, your bed to sleep in, your roof to shelter me. I didn't give them to the emperor of Switzerland. That's just what I say. Tell us whom then you give them. To the children, sir. Thank you. That will do. Time's up, Major. Son of, don't get married until I come back and 5 p.m. face the court next. Yes, yes, young ladies. Good evening.